Well, I don't think we have to worry about the grass being green anymore until springtime. So the day after New Year's and then that following week, we actually had three days of freezing temps and a couple of days of frost. And the grass, the Bermuda officially checked out until that spring scalp. What's up guys, I'm Rhett. Welcome back to Lawn Insider. In today's video, we're gonna discuss soil testing and I'm actually gonna use this My Soil soil test kit to test my own lawn. So soil testing has kind of become one of those YouTube buzzwords that you'll hear a lot about if you watch lawn care channels, but really how important is it to the average person and the average lawn? Because this is actually, I'm going into my fourth season um, in this house and in this yard, and I've actually never done a soil test myself. And I'm willing to bet like 99.9% .9 of the general population hasn't either. So today we're just gonna take this test and see what it's all about. In my opinion, soil tests aren't the holy grail because I think I've already proven you can have a really nice, definitely above average lawn if you just follow a few basic cultural practices like mowing frequently, proper watering, and naturally a good fertilization schedule. But I do think that it's an important tool for people who want to know exactly what their lawn needs so they can really dial it in. So what exactly is a soil test? It's really not very complicated. It just involves you collecting a soil sample from your lawn and sending it into a lab for analysis. The steps for collecting the sample might differ slightly from test to test, but that's the general idea behind all of them. So what are they testing? Now this is where it gets interesting because different kits will test for different things, but there's usually four things that get tested on all soil tests, and that's nitrogen levels, phosphorus levels, potassium levels, and pH levels. The first three, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, are called macronutrients. They're called macro because they're the most important nutrients for plant development. Now I'm not going to go into great detail here because I am not a scientist, but nitrogen is generally considered the most important nutrient for plants. It gives the plants energy for growth and provides that green color. Phosphorus is really important for healthy root development, and then potassium is important for water movement throughout the plant, and it helps fight off disease. pH level is tested because different nutrients are made available to the plant at different pH levels, and it's possible that we've been using products on our lawn that the grass wasn't even able to take up as a result of a pH level that was either too high or too low. So now let's just take a look at the actual soil test kit itself from my soil. I got the starter pack which comes with the test itself and then the tool to collect the samples and then that's just the box that it came in. The only thing that you're not seeing uh, right here that came with the box was the return sticker just when you mail it back for your analysis. But inside the box, if I can do this with one hand here, Inside the box is the envelope that you're going to mail it back in. And then you have your instructions right here on how to do the test and mail it in and all that good stuff. And then you have, this is where you're actually going to put the soil before you mail it in. We'll talk about this a little later and then a little measuring cup to add the soil as well. And then that's it as far as what's in the kit. You can actually get this in several different um, varieties. You don't have to get the testing tool with it. You can just uh, get the actual soil testing kit. You can get multiple soil testing kits. Um, so there's different levels just depending on how much you want to spend or if you already have the tools. But I went with the starter pack just because I didn't already have the soil testing probe. So the first thing that you want to do when you actually decide to take a test is figure out how many tests you need. Basically, the bigger yard you have, the smarter it might be to separate it into a couple of different tests, like maybe for a front yard and a backyard. But if your yard is maybe five or 6,000 square feet or smaller, then I think you're okay just using one test. And once you figure out how many tests you need, then you need to figure out where you're going to pull your samples from and my soil suggests that you pull your samples from six spots that are as evenly spaced as possible kind of across the lawn uh, so you're getting a good representation of the soil as a whole. So once you find one of the spots where you're going to take your sample you just take the probe and you drive it into the ground 
give it a turn and you hope that you get a decent core okay so you can see my core right here it's probably maybe about four inches they want you to get from zero to six inches as your core but when you pull your core you are just going to take a screwdriver or something you know like a screwdriver to knock it out and they want you to just put it in the box initially that that the uh, test comes in so i'm just going to take the screwdriver and i'm going to knock that core into the box right there good all right, so now I have my sample from one of the locations and I would just go around to the five other spots and repeat that process. You're definitely gonna run into times where your probe isn't able to go all the way into the ground because you're gonna hit a rock or who knows what else is in our soil, but you kind of just have to go with trial and error and pick a different spot until you're able to get a good sample. So after you've actually collected all of your samples, you will have filled up you know a, a pretty good portion of the box but what you're going to want to do is kind of crumple up the dirt you do have you want to break up the 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 bigger pieces and then you want to pull out any of the organic stuff so basically all the grass and uh, if you see any rocks and stuff like that you don't you don't want to have that in there either so you want your sample as clean as possible. So once you've gotten all the larger plant debris and rocks and broken up the soil as much as you could, you're going to take the scoop that my soil gave you and you open up your container and you want to make sure you're not going to spill anything out of here. And you don't want to remove anything either. It specifically says that. So take that. Get one level scoop. Okay, like that, I could probably add a little bit more. Okay, there's one level scoop. Then I'm going to put it in my container there. And securely fasten. Okay, now it's ready to mail. So once you actually have your sample ready to go, you just put it in the envelope they provided. You slap that sticker. Like I said, my sticker is in the office, but once I mail it, I'm going to put the sticker on there and it says you want to mail it within one day of collecting your sample. And then after I mail it, uh, it says it's going to take six to eight days to get my results on the MySoil app. So I'll see you on six to eight days. And we are back. So I actually sent in the soil sample on a Tuesday and I got my soil sample results the following Monday. So on the uh, website, it actually does say six to eight days. And I guess that puts me right at the lower end of that at six days. So pretty speedy turnaround. But now let's go ahead and jump into the results. All right, y'all. So the first thing that you really wanna do uh, when you hit the mysoiltesting.com page is actually register your kit and you can do this before you even mail it off um, and you get your registration number at the top of the instructions page that they include in the package and you would just click on the register kit and if you actually had a new kit to register you would do that and then just go through the prompted steps there but since I have already registered my kit and it's already gone through the process you can see that under the status it says it's completed and I can click on that and it takes me to my soil testing dashboard here and really we're going to focus on the sample results and a little bit on the raw soil data as well but if you look at the sample results right here it's a pretty easy uh, graph to read we have the optimal zone which has the two green lines shows you where the zone is and then we have our macronutrients on the left side and micronutrients on the right side and then the pH level in gray right here. 
And you can see that overall, most of my nutrient levels are either right at the bottom part of optimal or well under optimal down here at the bottom. Uh, the one outlier is calcium. Calcium is way up here in the stratosphere. And I actually looked up why that might be in our area. Why would we have such high calcium numbers? And turns out that all that limestone that we have in our soil is what causes these high calcium numbers. So nothing really to be alarmed about there. Um, it's possible to have too much calcium and for that to kind of be a detriment to your lawn. But I haven't noticed any problems with that and it would be fighting an uphill battle to try to correct that considering just that's our, our native soil around here. So for now we'll just kind of look past the calcium numbers and look over here to the left on the macronutrients and you can see that the nitrogen and potassium numbers are really low and the phosphorus is just on the bottom end of the optimal range and that makes sense because I have not put out a fertilizer application in probably since early November, which actually brings me to a pretty good point. On your soil tests, you don't want to take a soil test if you've recently put out an application of a fertilizer because you're wanting to really test like the bare bones soil that you have uh, with no other product mixed in. You know, naturally, if you make an application of something, it's going to skew your numbers in one way or the other. So I actually view those uh, numbers as a good sign because that pretty much tells me that I can put out any sort of fertilizer and I'm going to be in good shape because obviously my lawn needs the NPK because we're kind of low on all three, especially nitrogen and potassium. Sulfur numbers. Uh, sulfur is sometimes considered like the fourth macronutrient. Sulfur, you can tell, is a little bit closer to the optimal range, but it's low as well. Calcium, we already mentioned, is really high. Over here on the right side of calcium, you see the micronutrients, and that is magnesium, sodium, iron, manganese, zinc, copper, and boron. And these four are actually right there on the bottom part of the optimal range. But then zinc, copper, and boron really, really low. And again, just like with the macronutrients, since they're lower, that tells me that I can pretty much put out any product I choose and it's going to be uh, to the benefit of the lawn, which is a good deal because it means that I don't have to be super precise when I'm picking my products because my lawn pretty much needs all of it. So I can just kind of go with what's, what's cheapest and what, what's uh, most available. On the very far right side, you see the pH bar in gray, and that's actually really the most important one. And I'm happy to see that my pH levels are right there in the optimal stage because that means that any product I put out, it's going to be available to my grass. If that pH bar was too high or too low, some of these products, regardless of if, or some of these nutrients rather, regardless of the product I put out, would be locked up and uh, the grass wouldn't be able to, to take it up because the pH was either too high or too low. But since, just, since it's in that optimal range, we should be good to go right there. Over here in the raw soil data section, you're going to see the actual numbers that go with the chart. And down here, it's giving you the fertilizer recommendations, an organic and a synthetic option. I actually personally wouldn't use the fertilizer that they suggested to me because for instance let's just look at this one they recommended that i use the 7020 stress blend from yard mastery and i'm not saying that's a bad fertilizer but it's a stress blend and it does not have a very high nitrogen content and i can tell you right now my primary fertilizer is going to have a higher nitrogen content than that so uh, i might use that later in the summer when we're uh, dealing with a lot more heat and you don't want to push your lawn as much but until then i'm going to use something with a higher higher nitrogen content but anyway that's pretty much the gist of how you read these soil tests and uh, it kind of gives you a good idea of what you can do moving forward to get a healthier soil and then in turn a healthier lawn and we all know that a healthier lawn is going to make a better looking lawn so that's what it's all about 
All right, y'all, I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up right there. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave me a like. If you're enjoying the content and you wanna follow the channel throughout the season, hit that red subscribe button below. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave those in the comment section below. I'll see y'all again next week and we will be talking about pre-emergent Lawn Insider out.